the marriage. She can apply, she can go as the man, but if she want to uh, stay with, with uh, her husband, she can. But the opposite side, if a uh, woman is committing adultery and man has no proof, then there will be uh, swearing, uh, uh, swearing program, you can say. So, four times she will swear and husband will swear. If both are swearing that they have, uh, uh, the, the woman is saying that the uh, husband is committing this and she, uh, and the husband is rejecting and again she, uh, he is swearing, so then there will be a separation by law, by the judge, but because now both cannot live together. But uh, on the other hand, uh, if a uh, man is committing, so the automatically the uh, divorce will not up, will not occur. But she can apply; the judge can decide and make it. Thank you very much. Any follow up question on that? Yeah. Okay. Then the, uh, when the, before the flood came, the uh, prophet Noah took a pair of uh, animals, of each animal, on board of the ark. Mm. Uh, did he uh, did he take a, a, a pair of uh, swine? First thing, the taking of the animal on the ark is not uh, mentioned in the Holy Book Quran. No, not take a pair? No, uh, taking of the animal on the ark. Yeah is not mentioned in the Holy Book Quran. Not mentioned in any kind or, or different is kind not, of... Uh, is not mentioned in the Holy Book Quran. Yeah. So this uh, narration, this narration is from other sources, like from uh, the Jew or the Christian sources, or maybe some Hadith sources. So, we are bound to clarify the things that is appeared in the Holy Book Quran. Do you understand my point? Not, not specifically mentioned in, uh, in the Holy Quran. Or take, uh, did um, uh, Prophet Noah take a pair of each kind of, um, each species of uh, animal? It, it, on might be, it, it, it might be. It might be. It may not be. Then there will be no, no, um, if, if the flood came, then there will be no, no more swine on earth. Then. Uh, these are the details. Maybe the flood is not covering the whole earth. Some, because these, the things are not clear in the Holy Book Quran. Some narration says the whole earth was full of uh, the water and some says it was specific area that was uh, under the flood, not the whole earth. Understand? And the second thing, even he has taken the swine, so yeah. no problem, swine is an animal, the creation of God, like any other uh, animal, snake and some other uh, forbidden animal, there are many things. So swine is also the one, uh, the God creation. We are not allowed to consume it, but it is the beauty of the uh, world. We are not allowed to consume its, uh, its meat and its uh, 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 skin and its uh, bone, but it is uh, the beauty of uh, the world and one of uh, the animal, one of the creation of God. Le there are many uh, animals we are not allowed to consume. So the same thing is uh, this. So if uh, Hazrat Anu has taken other animals which are not consumed, so it would be taken. Actually, that's the topic of today, so maybe we can continue with the lecture. Yes, uh, Yusuf, you will continue. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. So let us uh, move on. So we have just covered a very briefly the main point uh, of Genesis, in which it describes about a detail of the ark, how long, how big it is, and how many stories it is, and so on and so forth. In, in great detail. But in the Quran, actually there are many verses uh, talking about the same subject, touch upon. And I've chosen two, uh, uh, from two uh, surah. And one point I need to mention is that the, the style of the Quran is quite different from the Bible. The Bible took it as a historical uh, story that from day one, that God created the earth, and then day two, what he has created, so and so forth. And then the story of Adam, and then his children, and so and so forth. And then, no. And it, it described in details about the history of, of the early people. But in the Quran, it is just a kind of talking to man by God, asking us what to do and what not to do in their daily life. And then in between, it make use of some glimpses of the history of the story of the previous people or the previous prophets and as an example to illustrate the content. Therefore, the theme is not about the story, but rather the subject of the discussion in the Quran is man, how we should live. So anyhow, therefore you will find that in many places it mentioned about very short, a few sentences about the early uh, prophets and so on and so forth to illustrate the point. And in brief, it's mentioned that Noah is not the, the only righteous man on earth as described in the Bible, but it said that he was a prophet. In the Bible, it didn't mention about the prophet, but here in the Quran, it mentioned very clearly that. Noah is not a common people. He is the one of the prophets sent by God and to his people. Not, he is not sent to all mankind. His uh, task is not to teach all the people on earth, but rather to his nation, to the tribe that he was sent. And therefore, his duty is to teach his people about God. And most of the people were stubborn and humiliate him and not only that, also challenge him. Oh, you, you want us that there will be some punishment from God? Please, bring it so that we know that you are telling the truth. You are lying. Please bring it. This is the challenge his people try to do. And Noah was ordered to build a, a ship, to build an ark in which not his family, but rather all those who believe and his family who believe would be being on board, as well as a pair of every species. But the way that he said, just a pair of every species, not mentioned about uh, the, uh, a like or so specific, as in the Bible said that everything that on earth that can breathe and crawl and even the bird and so on and so forth, it didn't go into detail about it. And then the Quran did not mention that only the family of Noah was saved. It's mentioned that one of his sons, he said that, no, I'll climb up to the mountain and then I'll be saved dead. Don't worry. And when no pride, he didn't, didn't go on board. And then a, a wave come and cover him. He was washed away. When the flood subsided, the ark rest on Mount Judy. Uh, this is only a very brief comparison that I made. But of course, you can compare with yours. Mine is not perfect. You might supplement me after I, I, I give my version. In the Genesis, Noah was the only just man on earth. While the Quran mentioned that Noah was a prophet sent to teach his people. Now, in, the, in Genesis, 
Then he didn't mention about the duty of uh, no. He just only mentioned that he is a perfect man and his generation. And here we mentioned that it covers the whole world. But the Quran is silent. He didn't mention about the whole world. He just said that the flood will come but, and kill the people. And if you logically, if you try to deduce, Noah was sent to his people. And his people were stubborn and also challenging, please bring the punishment. And therefore, God said, okay, you want it, I give you. So, God should be punishing only those who are arrogant, who are stubborn, rather than the whole world, because it's nothing to do with the other part of the world, right? And the mission of Noah was to teach his people, and therefore it's, it's a local problem rather, rather than a universal. Uh, you may not agree with me on this point, but uh, unless you have some other evidence to show it otherwise, and the size of the uh, ark was given in detail. And while it did mention, I just mentioned that it is made of wood and nail, and no further detail was given. And here in Genesis, the whole family of Noah was saved, and only his family. But what are the here? This family of Noah, except the disbeliever, means that one of his son, and the believers were saved. Genesis, all kinds of living things were on board. And here is a, a pair of all kinds of animals. And in the Quran, it says that it rest, the ark rested on Mount Ararat, here in Mount Judy. And actually, uh, the Arabic word Judy means high mountain. So there are some scholars that means that actually it, it means that it rests on a high mountain rather than a specific uh, mountain called Mount Judy. But Allah Allah, Allah no best. Yeah. And then, the God of the Lord repented, means that he regretted, and he made man on earth, uh, uh, and it was not mentioned in the Quran. And also God made the covenant with man that I will not do it again to destroy all the people on earth, and Quran is silent about this as well. And here it mentioned that rainbow was a sign of the covenant. Therefore, when you see the rainbow, you say that, oh, you remember God promised not to kill us again. But, you see? Anyhow, this is silent in the Quran. And here, there is another story behind the, the, the flood. It mentioned that Noah was drunken and naked. You, you, have you read the story? Uh, uh, maybe you, you haven't come up to that story. Where it really is. No, was one day take a lot of wine, drunken and naked in the tent. And the youngest son, the third son, come in and see the father naked. A small boy. What does he do? He come out. He do not know what to handle. So what to do? He tell his brother, brother, father, naked, this and that. Of course, the elder brother is more mature. Therefore, what he did is, he get a big cloak. He, instead of going in and see his father naked, he walked in this way and then cover his father. Okay, next morning, no waking up, find himself naked with something covering himself, and he asked, what happened? What happened? And then he find out the story. If you are no, what will you do? What will be your reaction? Feel ashamed or shy. Ayo. As a father, I was so I was so crazy, right? At least feel shy or maybe grateful to the son who have done that. But instead, he cursed the youngest son. Why? What is the reason? Because you relay my mistake to other people. Who is the other people? His brother, his elder brother. He's insisting his not to spread the rumor. 
not to tell the people on the street, but rather how what can be done, right? He do not know how to do it, but instead he was cursed. And in the Bible, actually, if you read and so on, then the younger son's um, descendants were being slaves of the elder brother because he go to Africa and the elder brother go to Europe. And that is why the European is the master of the Negroes. The story of Noah is told in the book of Genesis, in the Bible and the Torah. It's set somewhere in the Middle East about 5,000 years ago. Noah's family includes his wife, his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their brides. Noah stands out as a good person, the only virtuous man left in a world that had become filled with corruption and violence. So uh, this film, or part of the film, uh, actually it was taken from a film called Noah's Ark, The Real Story. It was produced by BBC 10 years ago. He is described as a wine grower, a claim that has an authentic ring to it, as wine was grown in the Middle East as far back as 3000 BC. And this reference also provides a rare insight into Noah's character. After the flood, the Bible says Noah planted the first vineyard. But it also tells us that Noah had weakness. The story goes that Noah drank too much of it. In fact, one night, this holy man collapses naked and drunk. But that is a 19th century image. 
it is completely at odds with what could have been built in biblical times. According to Tom Bosmer, an expert on ancient boats, not even 19th century engineers could have built a 450 foot arc out of wood alone. They had to use steel frames inside much smaller wooden boats just to keep them afloat. The problem with a 450 foot boat made of wood is that the wood as a material cannot maintain the shape of the boat and the boat would start to distort at sea, the seams would open up and, and it would sink. It's a safe bet that the huge ark would spring hundreds of leaks along the length of its huge hull and sink like a stone. That's not to say Noah didn't build an ark. It's just that it would have been much smaller. Then there's another problem. How can he cram two of every different kind of animal into the ark? At the latest estimate, there are 30 million species on Earth. Even with a fleet of arcs, no one would have struggled to fit them all in. And how would he have gotten the animals on board? Did he personally go and fetch them, or did they come to him? It is something Noah would have had to consider, especially since he had a pressing deadline. Noah had just seven days to find all the animals and get them on board. 30 million species in a week. Noah would have needed to load them at the rate of 50 pairs a second. But if one assumes a more realistic loading rate, then it would have taken Noah at least 30 years. It may seem like there's a stark choice. Dismiss the story as myth or appeal to the hand of God. But there may in fact be another explanation. The instruction to load all the animals could have referred only to all the animals in Noah's part of the world. In fact, the book of Genesis specifies which animals Noah was to load. The same book has a second set of instructions, which are much less well known or present an even more realistic scenario. Noah is told to take seven pairs of clean animals. Clean animals were those considered suitable for ceremonial sacrifices to God. The books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy specify ten such species, including several types of sheep, antelopes, plus cattle, goats, and deer. Seven pairs of ten species. That's 140 animals. Then Noah is directed to take a pair of each impure animal and bird. Again, the books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy list 30 or more. They include the pig, the hare, the lizard, the snail, and so on. That's a further 60 animals. Then finally, Noah is told to load seven pairs of the clean birds, like doves, ducks, and cockerels. Adding all that up, Noah had 260 animals. That's child's play compared to 30 million. Especially if you discount the elephants, kangaroos, and reluctant camels. A smaller ark and fewer animals. Suddenly the Noah story looks more plausible. So, not to mention about how to bring such a big number of animals on board, but also how to feed them for one whole year, and how to handle about the pieces that they produce. Hmm. 
So, uh, in brief, the book uh, in Genesis imagined that the, the boat was 450 feet long, and actually it needed the steel frame to support, which it is absent, and therefore it is impossible, according to the expert. And in, 70, in seven days, it has to bring 30 million species on board, which is totally impossible. Um, which is, therefore, unless it is a miracle. But the next part of the story may be the most far-fetched of all. Noah, the ark, and the animals. It's all meaningless without the worst cataclysm in human history. The Flood. According to the Bible, it rained until the whole world was covered in water. Such a catastrophe should have left evidence all over the planet in the form of uniform marine sediments spread across the earth and the ocean floor. But have geologists found any proof of a devastating global flood? The scientific quest for traces of the biblical global flood that Noah, his family, and the animals in the ark survived actually began more than 150 years ago. But geologist Ian Plymer, after searching across continents, sometimes in the most extreme weather conditions, has found very little evidence. A great flood would leave a signature. It would be a very, very large signature apparent all over the world. There is no such signature. But there is no evidence. In fact, there is only overwhelming evidence to the contrary. The absence of direct evidence is only one of the problems with the story. The whole idea of a global flood flies in the face of what is known about planet Earth. To flood the entire planet to the top of the Himalayas would take three times the volume of water in the oceans. It's hard to imagine where such a deluge could come from. The Bible provides some clues. It says it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. But even non-stop, that's not enough. We know how much water we've got in the oceans. We know how much water is in the polar ice caps. We know how much water is in the atmosphere, and we know how much water is in the rocks. So if we put all of that together, which has happened many times in the geological past, we still do not flood the continents. Geysers present another potentially fatal problem. 
They released poisonous gases from deep within the Earth's core, which probably would have killed everybody, whether or not they were in the Ark. Geysers pump out huge amounts of noxious, sulfur-rich gases. Even before the flood, you could not have breathed. Spring 